art in general kind of coincide. If you want to get down to, let's be frank, the whole part of art, especially, you know, the modern movement, is questioning what's truly art and passing that boundary. Well, I think there's something really interesting that's happened, too, with the introduction of different uh, technologies and things here where I'm not just questioning what, what is art, um, but kind of what is reality anymore because everything can be manipulated. We, we don't know how, to, how do we trust what we're What's seeing, how do we trust what real. we're hearing. Um, and I actually think there's something interesting here where you're dealing with a surrealist film, but when you had talked about uh, your vision for it, wanting to um, manipulate the kind of narrative, narrativity of it, the story, right. and a lot of places you guys went for realistic sound, for the yeah. sound that would match what we were seeing, which is um, a kind of interesting opposition to what the film originally was. Yeah, I was hearing a great thing on NPR actually today that kind of talked about that, about how artists today tend to go back to, uh, no, what was it about? It was uh, how way back when, and it was in England actually, talking about England, now that my brain's finally working. Um, <laughs> how back during Canterbury Tales, everything was a little risque and how everything was kind of dirty, if you will. And how England kind of turned prim and pro proper during the whole Victorian age. But they're talking about modern day England, England, how it's kind of going through this who am I identity crisis. And how it's kind of going back to the old days of thinking about things in more potty humor and dirty. And it's kind of funny and it's, it's back in style again and kind of going to the tried and true. I kind of see that with a lot of art too because we went through the whole modern phase and I'm not because that's my favorite style. And I'm not ever going to question it because I think all art has virtue. I'm one of those. But I do see kind of a new, you know, classical sense coming back into style again. Kind of coming around. In but, I mean, in the digital age, it's opened up all the stuff that we've had we got in the past. It. It's a contradiction. Now we can reinterpret everything. We can play with it. We can, and average people have the tools. The kids are doing a lot of this right now because they have professional level tools that they didn't actually you have betcha. before. So now any of us can get Audacity off the web, go to Freesound, get this stuff. We can go to YouTube, download uh, Good Time clips or art you know what Archie Bunker's place or any of the 70 shows whatever you want to do Hogan's Heroes and then and reinterpret it so we can actually add the dialogue and animate are doing a lot of that too where the people are creating their own dialogue for something that they do so it's like this whole new world out there where we can go and create uh, reinterpret everything that we've seen like we're, I'm teaching a class right now and what I told my students is this back in the day in the 70s when you had to build a prototype what did you do? You had to spend a lot of money and you had to sit there, and you had to use tape, you had to use wood, you had to use metals, you had to use this. Now you can get on a computer, and luckily if you're a student, you can usually get the software for free, willing. Um, and you can make a mansion that's 3D and tangible for nothing. Just a lot of work, but you know, it's still, it wasn't back in the day where you actually had to group glue sticks and use fossil wood and frame it and shape it and actually spend the money to do so. And so that's amazing. It's like a whole, we're going through a new renaissance, I say. Well, and, you know, in, 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 and in doing that, one of the things that, not, that you talk about, uh, there's virtue in so much art, a lot of architects complain that because of these very, um, all the digital tools that, that not just make it convenient, but make it so swift mm -hmm. for one to create, that takes away some amount of thoughtfulness, you know, just some amount of, of, of simmering on a thought. People are just so rushed to get, to create something that the richness of that doesn't get put into the end result. Right. And so there, there just seems like this big battle. I can see, I can see that too, that side, because there's a, what was one of my teachers told me when I learned graphic design? They were like, there's a whole lot of people who know the software, but there's not a lot of artists. Because just about anybody can, you know, grab it and go crazy. But the thing is, do you have vision and do you have passion and do you have the patience? Because a lot of that stuff might look simple, but it takes a lot of time to do. 
Okay, uh, one question and then um, Caroline, you want to start getting yours ready and you can answer the... Anybody else? I was just going to make a quick comment. You were talking about being inventive and making your own sounds and stuff. I had heard that when they were making the original uh, War of the Worlds movie, yeah. that the way that they got the sound for the aliens' uh, ship actually opening up, the door opening, that they took a, a mason jar and went into the bathroom and put it down in the toilet and got the, uh, the so echo cool. off of that and just <laughs> unscrewed the lid off of the mason jar. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting wow. sounds, just about anything. That's so cool. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. The 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 the, fa the the laser sound from the first Star Wars movie they got from hitting a uh, one of those uh, cables that runs from the ground up to the telephone pole yeah. with a wrench. That's actually how they got that sound. Yeah, that's a, yeah. and that that's actually the making of the Star Wars films is still my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. you know, going back to the day and actually being able to like use real tangible materials. That's still. That's awesome. Okay, Jill, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have Caroline. Caroline is a digital artist. Um, she has, what is it? Afro, oh, I practiced this. Afrogryposis? Arthrogryposis. Anyway. <laughs> So she began, um, I guess you, you, you were around 2004 when you kind of got introduced to the computer. Yeah. And she got a, 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 a certificate from, in, in visual communications from Richland College in 2007. And so she's been using her, she's been exploring, uh, using digital tools as a way to create some art that's unique to her. And that it, at some point, what she hopes to do is to begin to uh, sell this, sell, sell her art. Uh, prolific's not even the right word. Uh, 10,000 images, which yes. is overwhelming. Uh, she said in one month she uploaded like 980 something images. Now, um, that's a lot. And that's a lot for any of us to go through. So Kyle and some of us will actually work with you on some social media things that you can do to get your art and your name out there to be seen. So what she's going to do tonight is show us a little bit of what she's doing and how she uses digital tools to accomplish this. Her website was built completely by hand coding, so there's no, uh, no fancy software programs. She wrote everything in Notepad. She also likes the color blue yes. a lot. Yes, <laughs> that's um, my favorite. That's her favorite color. Uh, so, so uh, everything that she's put together, she's done on on her own. Okay, and and you know, and you can tell with the handicap and stuff, it becomes difficult to actually write any for any length of time because your hands get tired. It becomes difficult to do, and so throughout history, we've had a lot of examples of art of, of, of individuals and handicapped. Uh, being able to use art as a way to express what's going on in their lives and come up with new inventions. So she's going to show us uh, uh, some examples of the things that she's been working on. Okay, this is my website. It's um, if, if, if you okay. show it, if you can turn so they can hear you a little bit. There you go. Do you need me to run the computer for you? No, I got it. Okay. Thank you, though. Um, my name is Caroline Gravel, and um, this is my website. It's called ZZZSCENIGHT.com. Um, I did bring some cards with my domain name on them, um, if you want some after my presentation. Um, this is where I display my images. And I was, um, like, um, you, I, I put them in this, dis in this display where there's six images per choice, so you can see the images side by side. Or you can see them 